Hi guys, it's Jimmy, and uh, today I've spent a bit of time getting a whole collection out of uh, Rolex. So I've got all my Rolex out. Uh, some of them are gifts for my family, so but you know, it's a sort of a family collection, I guess. Uh, there's 38 watches out. Um, a few less than I previously had uh, because a handful have left the collection. Um, and, uh, but, I mean, as time goes on, there'll always be some entering as well. So, I don't know, it sort of seems to float around this number. It's probably, probably too many because a lot of them don't get worn. I usually stick to the same handful of, to wear. Um, as for my family, they've got their preferred ones they wear. And, uh, yeah, we'll go through them all because I don't want to make the video too long. There's 38 of them to go through, so I guess I better get on it. Um, so before I start, I'll show you that I'm, I'm wearing my uh, Oris Diver 65, the Melbourne edition. Um, I only made six of these, so I kind of feel special. Uh, wear this fairly often, just trying to keep it in good condition. I don't want to completely trash it on the farm. But um, yeah, I'm wearing, so I'm wearing that. And I made myself a coffee and I put it in my uh, Oris cup. Got a few of these cups, they're pretty cool. Um, so let's start. I'll start with my uh, daily wearer. Um, sorry I couldn't get them all in frame on the camera. I'm gonna have to lift the camera too far away. So yeah, you're not gonna see them all in frame. But anyway, it's uh, my 41 millimeter Rolex Submariner from uh, 2019. Um, so it's the first series of the new case, the 41 mil case. Um, I've worn it daily, not since then, not straight up. I didn't wear it daily straight up, but I did start wearing it, I don't know, it's probably maybe getting close to 18 months now. Um, so you can see the uh, polished surfaces are sort of not polished anymore. So yeah, it actually needs a clean. I didn't, I'll open the clasp. It's not great in there. But um, that bit needs cleaning. The rest is fairly clean. I tend to give it a quick clean in the shower. Um, but yeah, then once every couple of weeks, gotta open up that clasp and clean in there. But uh, yeah, that's that piece. I spent too long on that. But I do wear that every day and it's kind of my favorite in the way that it has the most value to me because I wear it every day. Um, now we'll go through the vintage. We've got them at the top here. So, we've got an Air King from about 1980. Um, a logo dial Air King. That's the reason I actually bought it. Uh, so it's got a Libyan uh, Petroleum Company logo. Uh, and that's the main reason I bought it. Found this on Chrono24 um, a little while back when, uh, before they started getting more pricey as people started realizing, you know, logo dolls are fairly rare. So got my hands on this one. Wish I'd bought a couple others that, I, that popped up. Now they're getting kind of hard to find and they're getting you know, bigger premiums. Uh, the bracelet's too small. Um, look, I'm not gonna run through every reference because I just might get it wrong. I can't remember if this is a 15, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's in this, like most Air Kings, it's in a uh, 34 mil case, which most Air Kings are, of, of vintage type anyway. Uh, so there's that. Then I've got my 1958 Air King Super Precision. So I love this because this comes, this is the rarer version in the 36 millimeter case. So, um, got those dolphin hands, got the blue second hand, and a radium dial, Swiss only signature. Um, so the reference for this is, uh, I think it's 5504. That's the 36 mil case. And that reference is shared with an early Explorer. So it could, you could have it in the Air King or the Explorer. Um, it's on a later folded bracelet, probably from the 70s. It should have a riveted bracelet. 
but it matches up quite nice. Brace is big enough to wear for me. Um, yeah, original crown. Uh, it's just a beautiful piece. Anyway, put that away. And I've got my full gold Zen of Daytona. Uh, 92, I think it is. It's early 90s. Has the inverted six on the bottom sub dial. Um, presents unpolished. Yes, yeah, got all the honest little hairline marks and that, but um, I would say very little wear. More storage marks than wear marks because uh, that bracelet literally has no wear. Um, love that these bracelets still have the really old school clasp. So it's got the printed look of the um, oyster on there and the raised logo is cool. Uh, really nice condition. Case back sticker still on there. Um, gorgeous piece. Love it. I've wanted, one, I've wanted one of these for a long time and then finally one came up and um, yeah, I had to have it. Then another Zenith, Zenith Daytona from uh, earlier this one, 89. Dial looks the same, but because they're a few years apart, when you put the two together, they are slightly different. Uh, as I said, it's from 89. Stunning condition. I think it's had a light touch up, but if you have a look at the the bezel, it's really sharp, still has the chamfer. Same with this, bracelet is very tight for a hollow link bracelet. Um, and the coronet on the clasp is very sharp, not smudgy or blurred from polishing. Retains this case back sticker, which is another thing to look for, that, you know, in watches that haven't been worn much. Um, and yeah, overall, beautiful piece. That's an inverted six also. Then, I go to my Daytona from uh, 1977. So this is actually my birth year one. Um, it was a real vintage grail when I got it. Uh, dial and hands are magnificent. Watch has been polished. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, they only got small lugs as it is, so the lugs are worn from polish. Um, really nice bezel. The enamel, yeah, in the numbers is still all there, none missing. But the dial is um, spectacular. Um, all the loom plots are perfect. No degradation in the loom plots. Hands are perfect. Um, original bracelet. Bit of wear in the bracelet. Uh, still very strong coronet on there and yeah so that's a, a 6265 so the sister reference to this is the 6263 which has the uh, the like the enamel um, what do you call it it's like a Bakelite insert bezel it's like the black bezel alright so you know the next one my 1966 GMT Master. Um, stunning dial on this because it's got the gloss finish dial. It's immaculate the gloss on this thing. No cracking, no nothing. Anything you're picking up is just the plexiglass that's got swirling on it. Um, loom plots are perfect, gorgeous. Um, really honest original bezel. Uh, case is fat and sharp. This thing's never been polished. Okay, Shemp is a beautiful, just original, you know, original markings from so many years. Uh, it's got the stretch riveted bracelet, correct bracelet from uh, 60, I can't remember if it's 66 or 67, the stamping inside it. Yeah, so that's from 1966. That's the last year of the gilt dolls. Nineteen sixty-seven uh, Submariner uh, reference five five one three. Uh, so this is a meters first sub. You can see it's got meters first for the depth rating. Uh, beautiful bezel insert. 
close to untouched. It's been polished at some point, but retains really symmetrical lugs. Very thick, very nice condition. Has the stretch riveted bracelet also, but um, this is an American bracelet. The rivets are slightly different. This bracelet's actually made in the USA. Um, which shows inside here. Get it open. Might be hard to focus though. Oh, wrong way around. Come on, focus. Yeah, there you can see. Rolex USA. It's a CNI bracelet. You can see the date, 7th of 67. The serial is 67 on it. So yeah, this watch was sold in the States. And it's a meters first. Uh, and then later after this, they went to feet first because they had such great sales in the in America. They um, decided to put the feet first. Sort of please their customers more, I guess. And then the last vintage piece we've got is from 1967 also. It's a Tudor sub, but I'm putting this in with the Rolex because it is a Rolex. Um, it is pretty much identical to a 5513. Um, just uh, at a, you know, had a better entry level price. But uh, yeah, so that's that. No, no original bracelet, I've just got this vintage new old stock band on here that fits it quite nicely. Um, but uh, beautiful piece, I love this watch. This one is actually unpolished. Really original chamfers, sharp holes. Beautiful piece. All right, that's the vintage stuff. Uh, I've got this little current OP in the small case. Uh, give it a little wipe. One of my daughter's daily wearers. Yeah, only that crystal needs a proper clean. But um, yeah, daily is this little thing. Cool, got that green pop. And then we'll go to the next line. I've got some uh, new old stock stuff. So I've got a Rolex Explorer here in the 39 mil case. This is the first series of them with the shorter hands. Uh, sometimes uh, nicknamed as a T-Rex. So the dullness is because it is all factory wrapped. I'm just gonna be careful with it because the stickers are old. So, literally bought it because I like factory wrap stuff, um, especially if it's a little bit older. And yeah, just, I guess it's a little bit harder to find as well. And I've got the ones I wear, so I don't need to wear every every watch I have. It's just not me, I guess. I just like to collect. Um, and here we've got a 36 mil Explorer. Uh, this is from the late 90s. I, think, I can't remember if it's a 98 or 99, but uh, it's a, it's the Swiss only dial. So this is during the time where they've stopped using tritium for the loom and they went to um, Luminova. And then quickly after, they only made these for a short time and then quickly by the, uh, about 2000, the year 2000, they went to Super Luminova. And then on the Super Luminovas, they've got Swiss made at the bottom. But as you can see, this one just says Swiss. And uh, it's not factory wrapped, but this is new old stock and have a look just how sharp everything is on this. It's stunning condition. Yeah. Got the first version of the um, ceramic Daytona here. Now they've updated them with the, you know, slightly different case and different bezel and all that. Um, so yeah. These get around on Instagram enough and everywhere, so not much to say about it. That's that. Got a factory wrapped um, sea dweller here from, I think it's 2004. These have been put away for a while. I haven't been, you know, um, doing anything with them, so it's, 
Pretty hard to remember all of them. But um, yeah, Factory Raptor was a full set. Um, 2000, I think it was 2004. I had two of them, I sold one. I had another Factory Raptor one, but I can't remember which one's which. No, I think the other one was 2004. I think this is later, 2006 or 2007, somewhere around there. The later ones before they went to ceramic. So yeah, it's got the aluminium bezel insert. They're really cool, the old seed dwells, because they're, the box comes with heaps of stuff. You get tools and um, diver extensions and um, these little calendars and things. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, here we have factory wrapped, uh, the full black GMT Master II. Um, so ceramic, it's got the bezel protector on there. But yeah, fully wrapped. I think this was from, um, this is a fairly early one. I can't remember if it's around 2010, somewhere in there, I can't remember. 10 or 13, I can't remember which one it was. Then we have the lefty here. So GMT Master 2, the Sprite, the lefty. Um, what's the other name, Destro. Uh, which is cool that I got it because I actually am left-handed. Not that I'd wear it on my right, right wrist because uh, I'm so used to wearing watches on my left that it just doesn't feel comfortable on the right. But um, yeah, that's that. Got that last year. We've got the uh, yeah, Pepsi. So GMT Master 2, the Pepsi bezel. My favorite out of the bunch. Uh, we've got all the colors. And uh, yeah, this actually I've worn a fair amount, taken on holidays, not swimming with it. Yeah, it's great fun. It's a nice holiday watch. Because it's nice and bright, especially if you're somewhere that's nice and warm. Um, yeah, another GMT Master 2. The, uh, yeah, the Batman, the blue and black bezel. This one's my son's one. He's at that age, nearly 19 now. He just doesn't... He was more interested in when he was younger, but now he's not really interested in wearing them. He never really wears a watch. So, just sits in the box, that one. This is another one that was my son's. He, he kept showing me this watch, he really liked it. And I, he was fairly young at the time. And um, I had another vintage, or semi-vintage piece, and I ended up taking it there and just flipping it on this and giving it to him for his birthday. But I think he was only very young, maybe 14. And uh, yeah, it's, look, it's a nice piece. It's definitely had some wear. Crystal's even got a couple, I think it's got a couple of chips along the edge. But still bulletproof. I love, I love the um, the gilt writing on the dial. Now most of them are just white writing that, that looks so much nicer. It's got gold hands, gilt writing. Cool piece. I think it's a... Uh, 2004, I think it's actually his birth year. I think it was 2004. Come with a full set, which is really good. It had everything, absolutely everything. So, yeah, got the current date just here. Um, in the 41 mil case. And, uh, uh, what's that dial called again? The Wimbledon dial, is it? Uh, yeah, got this for my son, it was his 18th birthday. So, but he really, I think he wore it a couple of times, he has not worn it. I think because his mates aren't, you know, they're young guys, they're not into this stuff and this expensive shit. So I, so just, I, think, I think he prefers not to wear anything like this. Like most young guys will just like his clothes and stuff. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just sitting there in your stock pretty much. Now this thing is hilarious. What a brick. So yeah, you guys know what this is. Have a look in the case back. 
cool. So it's the deep sea challenge. And I like on the back here, it's got the Mariana Trench, um, the date when they went down that deep. Um, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. I just wish it was like that one they did back in 2012 or whenever it was. We had said, actually said challenge on the inner ring here, but they didn't do it with this one. But um, funnily enough, it kind of fits my wrist. I can wear this stupid thing, even though it's that goddamn big. And uh, believe me, yes, it's titanium, but it's anything but light. I think just because of the thickness of it, the, how, you know, the way it's had to be engineered to be that strong. You can feel the brace has got no weight in it. But my God, the head of the watch has still got weight. But I can only imagine how much heavier it would be if it was, um, yeah, if it was steel instead of titanium. So I've, yeah, I've worn it a couple of times, but I've never worn it out. And I don't know why, I don't know why I haven't, I, sh I should. I just haven't done it yet. Um, love this sub. I should never have discontinued this thing. So yeah, nicknamed it Kermit. Uh, gorgeous dial. Uh, unloved for many years no one cared about these things then by the time it come around about i don't know 2018 19 people started catching on they wanted something a bit different just like now everyone wants you know unique or uh you know unique dials or you know uh, things you know that aren't standard back then everyone wanted it very monotone and plain so that's why now you know anything stone dial or anything different yeah, it usually gets a premium. So, um, yeah. I actually, I've worn it maybe a handful of times. I haven't really worn it. I think it's because I wear a, a sub every day. Look, I wear a sub every day and then I've got a gold sub. So I tend to wear a gold sub if I'm gonna wear a different one rather than just another steel one. So, here we go, talking about, you know, sort of um, unique dials, mother of pearl dial, diamond indices, you know, the 41 mil case, current, uh, yeah, current date just. Um, on the two-tone jube, you won't see this too often. And uh, it's a beautiful piece. It's my wife's this one. It was a sort of surprise birthday gift she didn't know about during lockdown. So I sort of got it very lucky. I rang up, I said, what have you got in the safe? Is there anything you've got there? And they showed me that and I said, yeah, I'm taking it. And um, I'd love it for myself, to be honest. I, I like, yeah, like so many others that have been collecting long enough, now they want the unique things. Um, my wife's Daytona, another unique one. This one they didn't make many of with that dial. Um, and funnily enough, if you look at the side profile of this case, this is the new, the case version of the yeah new steel Daytonas. They've got that turned down lug, slightly thicker looking. It's just the same case they used on these gold pieces. So yeah, beautiful dial on that. Then we've got a unique dial date just here in the thirty six mil. So we've got the palm motif. Another one, I don't think there was many made of them. They sort of made a bit of a splash at the start and they've sort of been forgotten. But uh, in the nicest version, I'd say, it's my daughter's watch. Got the fluted bezel, Jubilee, beautiful. Beautiful. Let's have a quick drink of this coffee before it goes frozen cold. It's actually cold out here. Um, I've opened the door so I don't echo as badly, but we're in winter now, it's quite cold. Here we have, yeah, uh, so we've got a two-tone Daytona. Uh, this is for my little daughter for her birthday. And um, I was actually holding a black doll version in two-tone, but uh, I think it's more masculine in the black and I was lucky to grab this. And I think the white doll with the black writing and then the red Daytona really pops, far more feminine. Uh, 
I'm one of the very few people that actually prefer this doll to the black because I've had both of them and I've had them side by side. And um, it's the kind of thing you have to appreciate in person rather than seeing on camera like this. If you see both of them in person, one in each hand, yeah, this, I think this is the winner. Even though the black doll is the one that everyone chases in a two-tone. So yeah, she's worn it a bit. She's just careful enough, it's not, it's marked, but it's not, yeah, it's not damaged at least. And uh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, this, this daughter, my youngest, she was the first one to ask me, Dad, I want to watch. She was only about, I don't know, seven or eight. And I bought her a, like a 36 millimeter Tudor um, Explorer version type looking one on a little leather band. She wore it every day on the monkey bars everywhere and amazingly scratched it, chipped it, did everything to it, never broke it. So, testament to how strong they are. This is my 40 millimeter um, Rolex Submariner. Uh, yeah, it's the last of the 40 mil cases. It's a real brick of a watch. Love wearing, I've worn this a lot. Typically, I'll take this for holidays, um, you know, swim with it, do whatever, and uh, they hold up really well. I mean, it's got a lot of hair line to it, um, little marks and that. It's not as shiny as it once was, but uh, at least I've got my value out of this watch. It was one of those ones where I was really lucky. Got it, like, literally a month before the price went up, like, five grand, and <laughs> I was happy about that. Then I've got a uh, pre-ceramic Daytona. So this is the last of the pre-ceramic. So got this um, at the end of 2015. So they discontinued this in 2016. I got it in December of 2015, and um, really enjoyed wearing it. It was another one that was a really cool holiday watch. And uh, still got the case back sticker. And I've worn this uh, swimming, uh, you know, whatever you do on holidays, yeah? It was quite fun wearing something that you wouldn't really wear swimming, but being a Rolex, being an oyster case, do what you want, yeah? So um, literally go in the ocean or the pool or whatever. So if you enjoyed this watch, looked after, it's held up really well. Considering it's a Daytona and they have a lot of polished surfaces, um, you know, late 2015 and 2023 now so yeah it's getting getting older and it's it's done really well um hope to keep this one in my collection forever so guys that is the collection where i go from here yeah there's some pieces i want to be honest for the last year i've been telling my guy that to get me a the sermit um Submariner, so you know the black doll green bezel, because I want a rotation one for this piece, my daily, because I've got to send this in and get it fixed, get it serviced and fixed. And I'd like something to rotate in between. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if he's forgetful or I'm just, I haven't been pushing lately. I don't, I've got to ring him up actually, but yeah, I can't, I can't seem to get. A fucking steel, a steel um, submariner at the moment. Um, I don't know because maybe because I'm being heavily trying to you know, collect Patek, and they sort of put you in that category. Then and don't worry too much about Rolex. I, it, it's funny. It's a funny one. Um, but uh, yeah, just reminded myself I'm going to ring him and see what's going on with that. But uh, anyway, guys. That's the collection, been nearly 30 minutes. I hope you just watch it all, because it's it's gonna get a bit long, maybe you get bored. But um, till next time guys, uh, take care, bye bye.